Now the uh, first scripture reading is from Psalm 146, verses 5 to 10. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food for the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. There we go. How's everybody this morning? All right. What's that? Oh, is that a heart? Yeah. That's really sweet. All right, so we have Matthew and Declan and Scarlett and Violet and Owen and Yemi and Mariah and Isa and Alexa and Eliana and Sam and Jack. We haven't seen you in a bit. How are you? Good. Excellent. Yes, Yemi. What did you forget? I forgot this she, Mrs. Walsh, I know, happened to print out extra no, ones. Oh, at the seat. Oh, at the seat? All right, well, you can want to go get that in a second? So, do you remember who we talked for who talked about? No, let, me, let me count: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Perfect. Okay. All right. So, who, do you remember who we talked about last week? Isa. Mhm. That's great. So Jesus is mom, right? Because Jesus, Jesus is the baby, right? And it comes, and an angel says, great memory, by the way, that um, you're going to have a baby. She says, how? And Holy Spirit, God's going to make it happen. Who's this guy? Jesus. God. Uh, Joseph. Joseph, that's right. This is um, engaged to Mary. Mary. And Mary, and Jesus' mom, found out first that she was pregnant and said, uh-uh, I don't think so. And then an angel visits him in a dream, and he decides to go through with it and get married. Yes, Sam? Why don't they still have faces? Why don't they still have faces? All right, so I'm going to show you one where somebody drew a face on it. What do you think? Do you see it? The other ones, it's up to your imagination. I, I am just so taken with the fact that that bothers you. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about different people today. And it all started with star in the sky, right? So these three we're going to talk about later. So today we're going to talk about what, what are these? All right. What's this? Lamb. And they make what sound, what noise do they make? Bah, right? So, there were, when Jesus was born, there were shepherds. And what do shepherds do? Yummy? Take care of Jesus. They take care of. Bah, yes, they take care of sheep, right? You did say sheep? Excellent. And they're out minding their own business, doing their, doing their pastor thing, and suddenly these angels appear in the sky to announce that a Savior has been born. In what town? Where was Jesus born? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Correct. Although I was, totally thought your Jesus land answer was awesome. Give me a high five on that one from last week. In Bethlehem, right? So, and so they were to, and suddenly you're minding your own business. You're sitting by the campfire. You're, you're thinking, I don't know, I'm bored. You're telling each other stories. And suddenly these angels come and tell you a Savior's been born. And they get their first, what's their first reaction? When suddenly the sky gets full of angels. Yes. 
They say no. Their first reaction is to be scared. One of my favorite things, my, uh, a church that I used to serve, we would do a live nativity where everybody would act it out. And when it said that the, that the shepherds were scared, were scared, one of the shepherds would take the staff, right, and go. <laughs> and it always just brought a big smile to my face. <sighs> like he was, he was, yes, he was like, I'm really afraid. No. Yes, absolutely. Like that. That's... <laughs> It wasn't like this. It wasn't cool. It wasn't like that. But it wasn't, what do they call that? It wasn't a dab. It was a, it was a, it was a, yeah, I'm afraid of whatever that is. But anyway, but so they were first, they were afraid. And then when they started talking with each other afterwards, they got really excited and they went to Bethlehem to see the baby. And then they went and told everybody because they were, they were so excited. And you know what? I think the really cool thing about the fact that the angels came to these, to these shepherds. They're just ordinary people, right? They were, the, the angels came to, the angels are different, but they came to the shepherds, just ordinary people like you and me. It would be like the angels just coming to us. They weren't, they weren't really powerful. They weren't really, you know, they, they were just normal people going about their business. And that's, that's the thing about... Um, that's the thing about, you know, that God comes to all of us, no matter who we are, God loves us and, and comes to us and wants us to know that a Savior has been born for us. Do you like candy canes? Yeah. That's so awesome. Because guess what? There's 12 of you and I have 12 of these. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. okay. You're welcome, Mrs. Walsh. <laughs> and all the teachers, because I'm giving you candy. All right. I'm going to give these to, who's going out with the kids? Are, okay, so I'm going to give them, and then they can give you in the classroom, okay? Yes. Okay, but can you, all right, go, go Yemi. Yes, she has extra copies of the script. For, and, and it's next week, right? Everybody's going to be here, and on Saturday we're going to come and practice? All right, let's fold our hands, close our eyes, bow our heads. Um, gracious God, thank you that you come to ordinary people like us, to tell us that a savior is born, that a, that we are, that you are, and that you are with us, that you love us no matter what. We pray this in Jesus' name, Amen. So thank you all. Our second scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter eleven, verses two through eleven. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him. Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom, it is, about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Let me just check this really quick. Can everybody hear me? Okay. It occurred to me last week, you know how last week we talked about uh, John the Baptist, but it was uh, at the beginning of the gospel he's out in the wilderness and jesus appears and john is saying that you know the axe is at the at the the base of the tree and that there's going to be a separation of the of the grain and the chaff 
and the chaff is going to be burned. And I always say, when we hear that, we're always praying, dear Lord, please, I don't want to be chaff. But it occurred to me with, in, in conversation with today's passage right, that this all takes place during Roman occupation. And the understanding of who the Messiah was, the expectation was that the Messiah was going to be a military leader who was going to liberate the Jews from Roman occupation. The grain could very well have been the Jews, the chaff, the Roman, the, because the chaff is the husk around the grain, and the threshing of the, of the, of the, of the grain, the stalks of grain on the threshing floor, and the, and the wind would blow, and the chaff would be uh, blown away and then burned in a fire, could have been a take that Rome, because that's what they were anticipating that a Messiah would do. And so here we have at the, you know, and here we have at the end, John saying, are you the one, really? Jesus meets John out in the wilderness. Jesus is baptized. He hangs out in, for the wilderness and is tempted. John the Baptist is arrested right after that. Why? Because he criticizes a government official. But beheaded by the government, Right? And so this question, are you the Messiah? Are things coming to place to, to, you know, what we're expecting? Maybe even for John, too. I just, it hit me, and I was like, whoo, that's an interesting read. The book of Matthew was written probably around 80 to 90 CE, Common Era. When I was a kid, we used to, I learned AD, but it's now CE, Common Era. The destruction of the temple was in the year 70. There was a rebellion of the Jews against the Roman Empire. They were squashed like a bug. And the temple was destroyed. And the people had to flee. I listened to a a scholar, a biblical scholar this week said, who said that the the year 70, the destruction of the temple and all that happened to the Jewish community was like 9-11 on steroids. Think about that families running for their lives, having to start over, their jobs gone, uh, the place that they worshipped destroyed, everything that grounded them that made them feel safe and secure gone. I think there are echoes today of the longings of the people back then longing for the things that institutions um, or th- things in our, in our culture, in our lives, in our common life, that would ground people. People are missing. I think there's a collective longing for life before 9-11. I don't know that we've ever ac- uh, dealt with it, but a time where we felt more secure, when we weren't afraid. The advent of cell phones... Have, which are also video cameras and night, you know, and I use mine as a flashlight and as an alarm and all of this stuff, but they're video cameras. And now we are getting to see daily things that happen in, in this nation and around the world, injustices that happen that we used to be able to just either not know about or just write off or we would make stories up. Well, they must have done something to, to deserve that or whatever. And daily we are confronted with things that offend our souls. And I think there's a longing for a a naivete when we didn't know, but we do, and we can't turn away. Families are spread out. Uh, Back in our biblical time, it was a diaspora because because they had to. Now we choose it. But I, and I've said this before, I don't know that it's necessarily, necessarily healthy for us. I listened to a, she's a Belgian uh, psychotherapist. She's in New York City. Her name is Esther Perel. And she's, she, the, the, the pressures that we put on our, our partners, if we are in a, in a committed relationship, we expect that person to fulfill every need, which is impossible. And when we used to live in the extended family, 
our needs got met by the larger group, you know, we, but now we expect our partner to be able to make us laugh and be able to support us when we're when we're crying. There, they, you know, the, every every need that we can anticipate, there was there. In a larger group, there's somebody who who can make up when you need somebody to talk to. There's there's somebody there. There's somebody there to say, "Shut up, listen to your wife." Wouldn't that be great? Right. But we've chosen this diaspora, and it's tough. And the institution of the church, worship in communities. You know, there's a longing that, 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 that churches, that, that worship in communities might be more central to our, to our communal life together. And we're, you know, churches all over praying, figuring out how to, how to make that happen. So that's some of the longing. But, and this is a significant but, God who is Alpha and Omega, the creator of all that you see. God who is Redeemer, who restores our souls. God who is Spirit, who is always and everywhere, is alive and well and with us even now. Makes all the difference in the world, the knowledge of that. Jesus is, and Jesus is coming again. The hopes and the fears of all the years are met in thee. We sing that to Jesus every year around Christmas time. What's the carol? Oh, little town of Bethlehem, good for you. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. I like that it acknowledges the hopes and the fears are met in thee. During Advent, we celebrate the already and the not yet. And today, we make room for joy amidst the longing. It's Gaudate Sunday, which is Latin for rejoicing. So today we rejoice. Jesus doesn't answer John's question, which is so Jesus. He just tells John's disciples, tell him what you hear, tell him what you see. This past week, and I'm, and I'm going to tell of what I, uh, I saw and heard this week that made me rejoice in the living God. I sat with five other women who are or have been caretakers, and their lives are tough. There is longing, but there was compassion. There was love. There was encouragement. There was support in the room, and I was grateful to God that I get to be a pastor. I sat with people who are grieving, and I was grateful for a place and a space where we can be honest with one another in our grief. I'm angry with God. I don't want to pray, but I still have faith. Hallelujah and amen that we have a space, a place and a space where we can be honest Christians with one another. I, am lived, I have lived the whole week with, uh, last week at, with communion, the kids were here. Um, and Jody Walsh had the brilliant inspiration to get some of the, ask some of the kids to ring the bell. And one of the little boys came up to me with this huge smile and said, I got to ring the bell. And I said, and I, at the moment, I'm like, I'm going to live off of that smile the whole week. And I remember when I got to ring the bell when I was a kid and the joy in that. I've been walking dogs at night because the sun, ah, because the sun goes down so soon. So I'm out there with my phone uh, as my flashlight. And the other night, the moon was just, it, it was a cloudy night, but the moon was just above the trees, but before it got hidden in the clouds, and it was so outstandingly gorgeous. And I said, thank you, God. And I resolved that night, I'm never going to complain again about having to walk the dogs. <laughs> because it's such a gift to my soul to be outside and to see the beauty that God has created for us. And I, you know, and, and I, Lord, I don't take it for granted. I don't take, 
the amaryllis for granted, or the, or the paper whites or the poinsettias? Where do you see God at work in the world? It's not all perfect, but there is still much to celebrate. I also witnessed this week young people still falling in love, adults learning to forgive, and learning other people's love languages and being able to communicate that love in a way that the other person can hear it. I'm going to celebrate the World Cup. Countries coming together, and the, the, the joy of it, the whole, you know, I, anyway, <laughs> makes me happy. And at the same time, I recognize that change never comes without a fight. So the unrest that we are seeing in our culture and around the world means the change is coming. And I celebrate that. I celebrate the, the fight for justice, for freedom, for fairness, for everyone. We celebrate all that is right with the world, even as we acknowledge that we need a savior. I was struck the other day, someone was praying out loud, not me. And they thank God for all of God's blessings that are too numerous to count. And I was like, yeah, I needed to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Take time to count this week. Gaudate, rejoice. Jesus would say the kingdom of God is at hand and is among us. May we have eyes that see and ears that hear. And may we rejoice that we get to be part of it. In Jesus' name, amen.